No matter how hard I try to share the potential side effects of GLP-1 drugs, especially in my obesity clinic, people are still flooding my clinic asking for them. I get it. They've been struggling with their weight for years and for some even decades, and they're looking for answers. But here's the truth that most people don't realize. These drugs mimic something I've been recommending for years, low carb, keto, and carnivore diets. But many of you did not come to this video to hear that. So what I promise to do by the end of this video is to answer a simple question for those of you who end up discussing using GLP-1 drugs with your doctor. Which of the GLP-1 drugs has the strongest weight loss? And if that's good or even a bad thing. So let's get started. I run an obesity clinic and guess what? Most of my patients don't use these medications. Not because they don't work, but because I help them understand that their diet and lifestyle changes can mimic many of the things that these drugs do naturally. Here's why. GLP-1 drugs work by reducing appetite and slowing gastric emptying. Well, guess what? Low carb keto and carnivore diets do the same things naturally. Many of my patients never use injections because they achieve sustainable weight loss through food. That said, some people still want or need these drugs. So let's compare them. Ozempic and Wegovy both contain semaglutide, but there's a key difference. Ozempic is approved for type 2 diabetes, but people use it off-label for weight loss. Wegovy is approved specifically for weight loss and has a higher dosage. Why does this matter? Higher doses of semaglutide does equal greater weight loss, but with that higher dose, there's also the potential for more side effects like nausea and vomiting. So even though studies show Wegovy leads to more weight loss than Ozempic, many people struggle to stay on it due to the side effects. Now let's talk about Majaro and Zepbound. They both contain terzepatide, but there's a key difference here as well. Majaro is approved for type 2 diabetes, while Zepbound is approved specifically for weight loss and has a higher dose range. Here's what separates terzepatide from semaglutide. Terzepatide works on two hormones, GLP-1 plus GIP, whereas semaglutide, which is Ozempic and Wegovy, only work on GLP-1. This dual action makes Majaro and Zepbound more powerful for weight loss. But before I go any further, let me explain the difference between GLP-1 and GIP. GLP-1, also known as glucagon-like peptide, and GIP, also known as gastric inhibitory polypeptide, are incretin hormones that regulate insulin secretion and have distinct e effects. GLP-1 is released from the small intestine in response to food. It enhances insulin secretion, suppresses glucagon, slows gastric emptying, and provides satiety, contributing to lower blood sugar and weight loss. GIP released from the duodenum stimulates insulin and has less effect on glucagon and gastric emptying. Unlike GLP-1, GIP alone may promote fat storage rather than weight loss. GLP-1 is more effective for glucose control and weight loss, while GIP can enhance insulin action, but also may contribute to obesity if used in excess. So you're probably asking why use a drug that can contribute to obesity to treat obesity. Let me pause for a moment and explain. First, let me explain how GIP can potentially lead to obesity. Number one, it promotes fat storage. GIP enhances fat uptake and triglyceride synthesis working with insulin to store more energy. Number two, it prevents fat breakdown. It inhibits lipolysis, which is the breakdown of fat, making it harder to burn stored fat. Number three, it worsens insulin resistance. In obese individuals, excess GIP signaling leads to higher insulin levels driving more fat storage. Number four, it doesn't suppress appetite. Unlike GLP-1, GIP does not significantly reduce hunger, potentially contributing to overeating. So, so why does terzepatide work despite GIP's role in obesity? Because controlled GIP activation with GLP-1 shifts its effects towards fat metabolism instead of storage. And together, enhanced insulin sensitivity occurs and it may improve energy utilization. More importantly, it acts differently in pharmaceutical settings compared to natural GIP signaling. This is why natural GIP is linked to obesity, but engineered GIP activation in terzepatide 
aids in weight loss. Now let's answer the question you came to this video to answer. Which version of GLP drugs cause the most weight loss? Clinical trials show that bound leads to the most weight loss. 21% of body weight loss on average compared to 15% with Wegovy. Why? I think you already have the answer. Since Zepbound activates two hormones as previously mentioned, which work really well together, this leads to greater appetite suppression and fat burning, and it outperforms semaglutide, which is Ozempic and Wegovy in almost every study. But never ever forget this. A more powerful drug comes with more risk. Greater nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and muscle loss are reported with Zapbound. And some people experience severe fatigue due to rapid weight loss as well. Now, let's do a quick overview of the pros and cons of a more potent drug like Zapbound. Some of the pros include it being more effective for weight loss, stronger appetite suppression, greater improvement in blood glucose control, while some of the cons of GLP-1 drugs like Zapbound include more side effects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fatigue, higher cost, and increased muscle loss risk. Here are some additional facts I want to emphasize about GLP-1 drugs. Fact number one, I've already mentioned this, but I wanna emphasize it again. GLP-1 drugs can cause muscle loss. The weight loss is not just fat loss. Many people on these drugs lose significant muscle mass as well. This can lead to fragility and long-term metabolic issues. One study found that up to 40% of the weight loss on these drugs was lean muscle mass. Fact number two, GLP-1 drugs can change food preferences. Some patients report losing their desire to eat highly processed foods, which sounds good, but some also report an aversion to protein-rich foods, which can make muscle loss worse. I tell my patients, if you use these drugs, make sure to prioritize protein intake. And please, please, please head to the gym to build muscle as well. Now I want to briefly address the issue with weight gain after stopping these drugs. So why do so many people regain weight after stopping these drugs? You may have already guessed it, it's primarily related to appetite suppression. Because once you stop the medication, hunger signals come roaring back. Studies show that many people regain at least two thirds of their weight loss within a year of stopping. This is why I encourage sustainable dietary changes like low carb, keto, or carnivore, so that you don't need these injections forever. So the big question for you is simple. How would you advise a friend who is considering taking these drugs? Share your thoughts in the video comments. And while you're thinking about it, here's what a metabolic health doc would recommend. Step number one, if you have not tried a ketogenic or carnivore diet first, give it a try. For those trying keto, I would keep the carbs less than 20 to 30 Per day. And I would not use net carbs where you subtract the fiber and sugar alcohols, but instead use total carbs, which is more effective. A ketogenic diet at this level or a carnivore diet is what we call therapeutic carb restriction in the low carb community. And it's just as effective or more effective than any medicine you can take. Step number two, if you haven't found success and want to learn how to mimic GLP-1 activation naturally, check out my video, Natural Ozempic Alternatives where I share supplementation and other strategies that mimic these drugs. Step number three, before considering the injectables, consider the Ozempic pill, which has the same mechanism of action as the injectables, but with less side effects. Check out my video where I explain the Ozempic pill with the link in the video notes. Step number four, if all else fails, now maybe it's time to have a conversation about the injectable weight loss drugs with your doctor. And as we conclude, I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, just do me a favor, subscribe for more science-backed obesity and metabolic health content. Comment, are you using these drugs or are you gonna rely on dietary changes to reach your health-related goals? Let's keep the discussion going in the comments because I know you have some strong opinions about these drugs. And if you're ready for another video, check out one of the videos that are on the screen right now.